Hi, my name is Henry Segerman. This is half of a 48 cell. This is joint work with Saul Schleimer. As with all of the other four dimensional polytopes that we've made, um, how do you get it into to three dimensional space for printing? So it starts off in four dimensional space, and then we radially project it onto the unit sphere in four dimensional space, um, also known as S3, and then we stereographically project from S3 down to R3, where we can print it. And uh, as with some of the other ones that I've made, this is only half of it. It's cut off along, this is the equatorial two-sphere in S3, in the, the three-sphere, um, because it would be too big to print everything. And uh, then you can reflect across um, the two-sphere uh, to get the other half. So this is not a regular uh, four-dimensional polytope. Um, this is uh, only a, a cell-transitive polytope, which means that each of the cells can be taken to each of the other ones in any orientation, um, by, uh, uh, by just a rotation of the whole object in four dimensions. Um, so the, what are the cells? So they are truncated cubes. So you can see there's, there's sort of a cube here that I've, uh, I've got my fingers on, on two sides of, um, but it's truncated so all of the corners have been cut off. You get these little triangular um, faces as well, and the original faces of the cube have turned into octagons. So where does this come from? Um, so another name for the, uh, the 48 cell is the bitruncated 24 cell. Um, so I made a, uh, this model a while ago. This is uh, dual half 24 cells. And this shows how the 24 cell is dual to itself. So if you take any polytope, you can uh, find the dual polytope, which is what you get when you replace all of the vertices with uh, cells. And well, in this case, for a four dimensional polytope, vertices go to cells. Um, edges go to faces, faces go to edges, and, uh, and cells go to vertices. So, um, so you can see maybe, uh, so this one here, the vertex in the middle is replaced by this octahedron, um, which is centered on that vertex. So this guy here is the dual of, of this guy. Um, and there's, a, there's another relation uh, between uh, the, uh, a polytope and its dual, which you see with uh, with truncation. So I, so I already mentioned truncation for um, uh, the polyhedron. We sort of cut off a vertex and uh, replace it with a, a little triangle in this case. And so you can think of that as, as you start with a vertex with three edges coming out of it, and you remove that vertex and you put in a little uh, a little face, which um, where the vertices of that face are on the edges that were coming together into the vertex. And it's the same idea here. So if you're truncating a four-dimensional polytope, let's look at uh, this, this vertex in here. There are eight edges coming in here. And so as you start truncating this guy, you're going to replace that vertex with a little cube, which has its corners on the eight uh, edges coming out of, of the original vertex. And so that vertex in here uh, corresponds to this, this cell here. So as, as I start... Oops. As I start truncating this vertex, I'm going to grow a little cube centered around here. Um, and bitruncation, so this is bitruncated 24 cell, is when you truncate so, so much that you're sort of halfway in between uh, the 24 cell and its dual, uh, which is also the 24 cell. So what happens is that little cube grows and grows and grows and then starts crashing into its neighbors. And uh, you get this uh, beautifully symmetric um, sort of uh, halfway between the 24 cell and its dual, um, it's almost regular, but not quite. And uh, it has all of the same symmetries as the, uh, the 24 cell does. It's threefold symmetry. Um, it's uh, two reflection symmetries and uh, fourfold rot rotational symmetry here. So this is half of a 48 cell.